For the past couple of years that I've been taking portraits in studio, I've mainly stuck to using two lenses, the Tamron 28-75mm f2.8 and the Sony 85mm f1.8. The Tamron being my go-to all-around lens for studio work because of its versatility that allows me to take full body pictures all the way to close-up portraits, while the Sony's focal length of 85mm is my preferred lens for headshots. Recently though, I've added a third lens into the mix, the Nikkor S 50mm f1.4 from Nikon. This lens was in production from 1962 to 1974, officially making it a vintage Nifty 50. The lens is made up of metal, so it has a solid weight to it when compared to more modern 50mm lenses like my Sony 50mm f1.8, which feels as light as a feather when compared to the Nikkor. Usually I'm all for lightweight lenses, but I actually like the heavier weight of the Nikkor, which in a way allows me to appreciate the overall craftsmanship of this lens that's around 60 years old now. Speaking of ergonomics, there are two rings on this lens. First is an aperture ring that clicks all the way through, which feels pretty cool to change the aperture with. It's very mechanical. You almost get the sense like the internals are changing or transforming beyond just the blades closing and opening. The only other lens I own with an aperture ring is the Sony 40mm G lens, and it's pretty boring using its aperture ring compared to this one. I know some people might think who cares, but personally for me, it's these types of little details that add to the overall fun of being a photographer. The second ring is the focus ring, which surprisingly has really good resistance and a smooth glide to it considering how old this lens is. There are measurements on it in both feet and meters that let you know how close or how far you are focusing with the minimal focusing distance of this lens being just under two feet. Overall, when it comes to the look and design of this lens, I think it's a cool piece of vintage glass. I definitely like the whole retro vintage aesthetic that this lens has, and I should have been using it as soon as I got it, which was about two years ago during a trip to Boston, but it wasn't until a few months ago that I actually finally started using it. So what led me to start using this lens, you might be wondering? Well, it was this portrait by a photographer named Marcus that I came across one day and I immediately wanted to recreate a photo similar to his using the Nikkor 50mm f1.4. I knew I wanted to recreate this look with the Nikkor for two reasons. Reason number one, you can see that the focus falls off around the model pretty quickly with just her face in focus, so this made me think of a white aperture like f1.4. And secondly, because the portrait is in black and white, I figured that the Nikkor would add a natural and authentic film look that could only be created with a lens as old as this one. So let me briefly take you through two recent photo shoots where I used this vintage Nifty 50. First, it was during a session with Mariel, who is a model from a local agency here in Los Angeles. And I went for the exact same feel as the portrait by Marcus. Only difference here is that I had the light shining on the model coming from her left side as opposed to her right side. I used only one light because if you look closely at his portrait, you can see the catch light in the model's eyes is reflecting only one light source. I feathered the light, meaning I had the edge of the softbox aimed at Mariel to help me get the softest light possible and also to get more light fall off towards the back of her, just like the original photo. By having her lean forward a bit, the brightest part became her face where I wanted the focus to be, while at her shoulders we can see that the light is beginning to fade away. Since I was capturing these wide open at f1.4, I was not firing the flash on my strobe light. I was only relying on the modeling lamp because this strobe's minimal power output is 1 over 32, which is still too bright, especially if you have a lens wide open at f1.4. After playing around with this look and trying my best to keep Mariel's eyes in focus at f1.4, these were my top two selects. So not bad, right? Well, after this photo shoot, I remembered that when in photo mode, the A7 III's ISO can be as low as 50. So on the next photo shoot with Julie as the model this time, I changed my ISO and also the mood from the original attempt. I opted for a white backdrop with Julia wearing a light colored top to add to the overall new energy of this look, which I wanted to feel more inviting and also just have it be a simple contrast from the previous dark and moody approach. 
The lighting setup remained the same, with one light being used, and of course this time I did have the flash go off at its lowest power of 1 over 32, since my ISO was now at 50. To make the most of using just one light, I had Julia sit up against the white backdrop so that I could get as much light as possible landing on the background while still feathering the light on Julia to get that nice soft lighting on her. There's something really cool about combining past and present camera gear to photograph people and have this vintage lens provide its own unique touch to each picture that I take with it. Especially when open up to f1.4 and you can see the beautiful softness created around the model. For me this is also a great venture into old analog camera gear because prior to adapting this lens onto my Sony mirrorless cameras I had never used vintage gear of any sort. I like that this lens provides me with a bit of a challenge when taking portraits, which is having to constantly rack focus because I can't rely on autofocus for obvious reasons. Taking away this advantage that many of us photographers have nowadays has allowed me to shoot at a slower pace than I usually would during most photo shoots. And I like this because it has enabled me to take portraits of people in those moments where they are deep in thought or trying to express an emotion. And ultimately, that is what I try to do with my portrait work, which is to capture those special moments. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video here today. If you did, I would really appreciate if you were to give it a thumbs up. That way I know I'm doing something right. Um, and then also I wanna leave you with a question. Have you ever adapted an old lens to a modern camera body? And if so, which one? What lens, what camera? Um, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys there. See ya.